Hello, everybody. This is Shane Pearson from Leadspace. Uh, thank you for coming today and I'd like to talk a little bit about how to choose the right CDP for your business. Um, and uh, we'll have a little bit of time for questions. If you have any, feel free to post them and we will uh, try and address those uh, as they come up. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. So first, a little bit about Leadspace. If uh, you're new to us, we're uh, a recognized leader in the B2B buyer uh, customer data platform category. And we help pioneer that category. We've been delivering solutions for over a decade. Uh, we have uh, an AI powered B2B buyer data, data platform, which is a solution that includes our CDP solution and provides a lot of additional capabilities that we'll, we'll also talk about today. Uh, and we're really fortunate to work with a lot of really great companies uh, across the world, uh, many of which you probably recognize here. So let's look at why they use CDPs. So um, one, before we get into talking about how you um, evaluate CDP solutions and some of the things we do at Leadspace, you know, what are the results that people are looking for? And we tend to see them in a few different areas. Uh, and let's kind of just hit highlights for those. So. One, you see people that want to do full database uh, enrichment and lifecycle management. And that means that they're looking uh, for uh, someone like Leadspace to manage all their different uh, systems that have customer information. So that could be sales information, marketing information. Uh, and you know, we have people with anything from just a handful to dozens of systems that we then coordinate their account profiles uh, for companies and people. And, and leads and then update them regularly, which can be weekly, monthly, quarterly, depending on their needs. And we help them under, understand also their total addressable market by helping them compare the, their data with our overall third party graph in, in terms of understanding their, their, the places they could be selling to better. And Salesforce is a great example of that, where we're doing uh, enrichment and profile unification across all of their, their data. Uh, Microsoft is another good example where we're doing that type of profile enrichment and unification and again also working across their full database. Um, it's also a good one where we do a lot of lead to account matching and that's something that people also uh, use CDPs for where uh, what they're looking for is as close to possible real-time uh, lead to account or you can also think about this as, as offer. You know. So if it's being driven by web activity or demand gen activity, it's really uh, lead to offer. So it's the interaction uh, that you're driving by identifying who someone is, what's their persona, and what's the next best activity that you want to drive. And so that's where Microsoft is a great example. Um, Hewlett Packard is one where this also shows something that, uh, that we see a lot of people using lead space benefit from, which is uh, not only can we do all this great uh, work for you to get your profiles in order, keep them up to date uh, based on what your needs are. But also we help people save a lot of money in their data spend. And so Hewlett Packard, we were able to work with them so that they went from 16 data vendors to four. And one of the reasons we help people to be able to do that is because unlike a lot of solutions in the market, Leadspace has an open platform where we are assembling data. We work with uh, multiple providers to put together the best data set we can, but then we can also plug and play other uh, data service providers. We have partnerships with, with most of the largest providers that are around and we can serve their data through our platform in addition to our own if, if you need it. So in their case, they cut their data spend annual budget by 75% and they were able to simplify uh, their vendors from 16 to four and have us uh, manage everything. And then another thing that I already brought up in their case, they're doing, uh, uh, lead to account scoring and routing uh, with us that has to have under a 90 second SLA because they're trying to match people and route them to BDRs for immediate follow-up. So those are some of the reasons when we talk about, hey, why, why is CDP? The, these are the types of things people are trying to do is, you know, not just data, it's not a one-time buy, it's how do I keep my data in order and then use it to drive real sales and marketing activities. So let's look at some of the ways to evaluate CDP solutions. Uh, that you know, we typically talk to people about. So when you think about what are the things you need a CDP to do, 
Uh, first thing is it definitely uh, needs to both be able to manage first party data. In other words, data coming from your systems, different applications, it could be cloud data warehouses, MDMs, you name it, anything that has uh, relevant customer data, uh, activity data, engagement data, history, that's first party data. Uh, third party data is then uh, something that your CP would normally bring in, or you might be buying that from individual companies and trying to manage yourself. And that's where we get into it's firmographic data, which is a fancy way to say company data, like company name and uh, size of company and where they're at and all their subsidiaries. Uh, demographics, so that's all the information about uh, contacts and companies in terms of you know where they're at and, and typical information. But it's also blending in a lot of the data that's available in social and web uh, sources. And then uh, being able to layer on uh, custom, more uh, specific data around uh, competitors or intent that can be brought in also. So then what a, a data, data platform should do is allow you to define profiles. And that should really be by the system that the data is going into. Because the data you need, say, for an ABM solution or your marketing automation, your Salesforce, they all need to be coordinated, but they might have data that's specific to each system. And the customer data platform should be able to take that into account, support custom mappings, support dynamic mappings, and uh, be able to provide uh, data to, to make those solutions uh, work best. Uh, the other two parts that come into this is you want to be able to segment your data uh, so that you can then use it to drive uh, sales and marketing activities, but it's also everything from territory planning for sales to individual marketing campaigns or sales campaigns at a, say, field marketing or, or individual um, business group uh, level. And of course, activation gets to, while well, we just talked about some of the manual parts, it's also driving the whole demand engine. So obviously much of what we do today is trying to decide where we're gonna spend money. So it's driving people-based activities but then also driving all the automated activities that need to happen, whether that's you know, ad-based platforms, email-based platforms, or content management systems. And so that's just high level, you know, some of the things that we would bring up when we talk about what are the solutions that a CDP needs to drive. So when you think about different types of CDPs, uh, you know, CDP is, is used for a lot of broad different uh, categories of solutions. And uh, this is just you know, one, one way to look at it. And, uh, and this comes up a lot for us when we talk to people. So first you've got the homegrown kind of CDP uh, solutions. And these are kind of all over the place in terms of what they try to do or do. They tend to be very much focused on just managing core uh, aspects of the customer profile. And so a lot of times it's the core profile, it's the, the company, the type of uh, information around it in terms of it's a customer, it's a prospect, it's obviously all their, their contact information. And the idea there is so that you can at least have, you know, one view of a company that you might have interactions with in, in different systems. And a lot of these are built on MDM type of platforms. Uh, they focus on identity resolution and then at least basic uh, business intelligence in terms of trying to understand uh, how you have a relationship with that person, but they're 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 uh, very often only first party data. They're manually uh, maintained uh, in some cases, and then uh, maybe governed is really what is automated. And they're really not aimed at business users typically. So it's very much an IT driven use case in in the scenarios we see them, um, and that's fine. We tend to connect to these and, and extend them. Uh, where people want to continue to use the government governance aspect, but that is like one big slice of what CDPs are. So then you have CDPs that are more business to consumer, and uh, what they tend to focus on is first party data. They don't tend to have third party data that's available, uh, and then they really focus on segmentation and activation. So it's really trying to drive the the B two C, and a lot of a lot of times it's the B two C automation aspects of how people are trying to interact, whether that's a web-based uh, interaction or it's a, say, a customer service-based interaction of just trying to identify who the person is, uh, see what they, their relationship is with the company, and then really drive you know, upsell, cross-sell, next best activities. Um, and they're good at what they do. However, for B2B, this is where we get into 
you know, B2B um, has some different complexities in terms of what companies are trying to deal with. And so uh, there's a lot more that's required. And so when we look at what is in a B2B CDP, it's the ability to blend first and third party uh, data. Uh, second party data is a, a way to say that it's data you've acquired that's not your own that you can provide. So that's second party data. So it's ability to blend all those and then be able to have a very at scale ability to classify automatically all that data so that you understand your different uh, segments, your buyer segments or your customer segments. And so the use cases that we see there really get into uh, helping people uh, be able to automatically um, segment all of their customers. And you know, we work with people with millions of uh, profiles and you know, thousands and thousands or hundreds of thousands of customers. And what they're trying to do is when they um, are say it's planning sales territory management, have a way to very quickly understand what that landscape looks like, all the way out to how do I have uh, the ability to interact with you know, people either, again, on my website or demand gen interaction or for BDR. And it's immediately understand you know, what's the, the fit of this uh, person or company with us as terms of uh, propensity to buy, what's their intent and engagement, and then how do I as much as possible automate my interactions with them. So first thing is the data is clean, organized, accurate. That's just table stakes. But then it's really the, how you help drive the uh, automated segmentation or, or manual if people are looking to do uh, their own work and then also drive and automate all the activation channels. So um, this is something, again, these slides will all be available after the, the webinar. Um, just another view of, of that uh, diagram with where you see these different capabilities and we've uh, organized them by type. So data and profile capabilities, what you tend to see, model and analytics capabilities, what you tend to see, and then activation. And so this is just a handy you know, guide for you to understand if you're looking at different solutions in the market, um, you know, where they fall, because people will just say, I'm a CDP. But if you start to look at what they offer, you can kind of place them in you know, these different categories. And this is also a good way if you're in a company where let's say you've got a homegrown CDP or B2C one, and you definitely are like, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're doing B2B. We need something with more capability. It's a great, you know, just easy way to talk about the capabilities that you uh, perceive you need and have that kind of conversation. So last, and this is to really help understand some of the profiling aspects about when we talk about merging and blending first and third party data. So again, this is another good eyeball chart to kind of have this discussion, which is, you know, we've got what makes up a profile. And so you've got account uh, information, you've got the predictive fields, which we're going to talk more about this. This is a lot of things that we do at LeadSpace to do uh, fit scores, which is propensity to buy and then intent and engagement, which is how people are interacting with you. So this is all account company level. And then you've got person demographics. Again, first and third party information that's coming in. And then you can also score, you know, people based on persona, which is, you know, what do they do uh, and uh, what type of um, skill sets and, and other things that are attached to persona that might drive propensity to purchase. And then uh, fit scores for people are also um, connected to what company they're at. So you can see the, you know, how good of a contact someone is by looking at all these scores together. So, you know, LeadSpace works across all of these areas, either bringing our own data or scoring. And again, this is where it gets to work pluggable and we can bring in other people's information. So in our case, while we fill in all these uh, buckets, we can also bring in uh, other companies uh, that would be here. Like we have a partnership, we bring in Zoom Info data, we have a partnership, we can bring in by Bora, or we're open and we can bring in data as second party uh, or we can bring it in just through an integration. If you didn't have lead space and you were doing that homegrown approach we talked about, you would have to try and fill in this bucket with you know best of breed vendors or build it yourself. And that's a really uh, complex and expensive thing to do. That's why solutions like uh, lead space exist. And then as I mentioned, how you target these different channels is also different. So the way you wanna do your segmentation and, and the profile data you need to use to automate it, is gonna be different depending on what you're trying to do 
Um, we do that as part of our platform. If you were building this yourself, you would have to go do it on your own. If you had a platform that's a closed platform, you uh, might have to use only their proprietary capabilities. So, and then last, when you're looking at licensing, it varies all over the place. We definitely suggest that you look at some of the different ways that people do it. Um, at LeadSpace, we provide how we do our licensing, just as an example, which is we manage profiles. So when we're matching to manage your profiles, that's what we count and that's how we do licensing. Uh, if we have data that's cleaned up and worked out of your databases as part of the system, that's not counted as we manage your data and have to re-enrich it to keep it fresh. That's not counted. We just count what we're managing overall. It's a much simpler model than a lot of that are out there. And there are many different models that are out there. So that's something you should really take into account. Okay. So that was a quick overview of the market and some ways to evaluate uh, how to look at different solutions. And now what we want to do is look at how we provide a solution in the market and give you some examples of how we solve these problems. So we just talked about CDPs, how to evaluate some different providers. And then now what we wanna talk about is how do you use a CDP? And so one of the things that, uh, that I you know, share with people is the first thing that you should realize when you know, you're doing sales and marketing and evaluating a CDP is that not everyone wants to buy things from you. So they don't want your products and services so what you want to do is find the people that do want to use your products and services. And we call that active profiling. And so this is how we take all those requirements we just talked about and make them real. So let's talk about, I want to drill down into this concept of a B2B profile. So for those of you that are working in sales and marketing or, or in a data role, supporting sales and marketing systems, what we all know is that your, your typical CRM profile starts with first party data. And unfortunately, that first party data is uh, not always complete. So you have empty, empty things. You have things that may or may not be right. And that really affects how you do any automation. So if this data is hand entered, you're at the, the whim of the person having put it in right, they may or may not have validated it. Uh, you may be uploading information from random you know, interactions at trade shows. And uh, you know, this can cause all kinds of problems. And uh, typically what might happen is that you know, we'll try and match things in a system. You might find matchable multiple accounts. And so a lot of this ends up getting manually routed. In fact, you'll have companies where you know, manual routing is just the, the way things all happen. And it's really time consuming. It's really, um, you know, it's, quite frankly, it's a waste. That's, this is why CDPs exist. Sometimes what people then do is say, oh, we can fix this. We'll go do a data enrichment. And they do a one-time buy from a vendor. And it's to fix things like titles or its locations, its contact information, whatever it is. Um, that's a really inefficient way to do it. And it's a one-time enrichment. And so very quickly, the information is going to get out of date because you know people move, people change. And... Uh, what what the information is today might not be the same that it is tomorrow. Uh, and so when we look at that, let's say you've got it working kind of. Okay, now you throw it over to the ops team and they've got to keep it going. So they've got to normalize this data. They've got to keep it unified. They've got to keep it integrated and up to date. And they've got to do that across all your systems. And so this is where, you know, it, it gets really hard, especially if you're trying to do it you're, you're on your own because you've got people changing jobs, you've got companies being acquired. Not only that, even in your own company, you've got things like sales territories changing uh, or, or responsibilities for accounts changing. And you know, basically it all falls apart. So our point of view is that you know, B2B profiles is a numbers game and it's all about automation. And it's the automation with consistent and accurate data that makes a big difference in keeping your profiles up to date. So while a lot of vendors have you know, different types of data and methods, it's that combination that, that really matters, especially when you take into account the amount of churn in profiles, which is uh, pre-pandemic, the average when we did studies was about 5% of profiles changed per month. And actually since the pandemic uh, or 2020, 2021, 
what we're seeing is that can be as high as 10% uh, change in month to month. So that means your data is basically turning over, you know, when you do that kind of math, you know, every year, all your data is out of date. So it's really important to keep things fresh and on a normal uh, cycle. So what we do that's different, we talk about the open platform, but we also multi-source all our data. So we are already buying the data and bringing it in so that it's fresh and stays up to date and you can take advantage of that. Um, let's look at a couple of specifics and then we'll see if we have a couple questions that I can answer. So just in summary, the way we solve this is active profile management. And so that is this open graph. It's us taking advantage of about three dozen different uh, data sources that we unify for you. We can also bring in other data sources as needed. And what that allows us to do is to have the most accuracy and capability to match accounts and people, uh, and then uh, map them to what your needs are in your system. And that gets to this idea of that full profile. So you need the account information, you need the person information, and then we're gonna talk just a little bit more here about the scoring, which is really fit score, which is propensity to purchase either at the account or uh, product level, and then intent, same thing, account and, and uh, product level, as well as personas and how those drive a uh, fit or determining people that are better to go contact. So our solution combines all of those aspects, which is full profile management, which can be real-time updates and managed updates uh, based on either triggers or schedules. Uh, profile signals, which is, again, where we get into things like, you know, have people moved? Uh, do you have tech technical um, data that drives a propensity to be good customers and purchases? And then all the SaaS management aspects in terms of filling out the platform. So that's the being able to do uh, real-time updates, real-time discovery, uh, the schedule or triggered updates, bring in your own data, uh, and also all the segmentation and real-time profile help. The other part is this is all uh, directly integrated into our scoring capabilities, which is the total addressable market. You know, is this company a good fit? Do they fit and look like people who have purchased from you before? Uh, how much do they look like that? And we have a very simple model that, that brings all this up uh, so that we can score companies in real time. The persona part is when you see people, it's the, the, the counterpart. You know, do they look like buyers? Do they look like people who bought from you in the past? And then coming back to the uh, intent and fit part, doing that so that you can see the combination of signals so that when you're interacting with people, whether that's it's a salesperson, you know, prospecting, or it's your uh, marketing uh, group trying to do automated campaigns and email, it's being able to use this to very quickly segment and have the right um, targeting based on where you are in your funnel. Um, this is included just for everything that I described about the scoring. So you've got it written down with details. The main thing here is that we score all accounts, we score all people so that you can understand where they fit in terms of uh, mapping to your company so that we can do two things, common view of accounts and contacts for all the people in all your organizations. But then it's also, and I know I've said it a few times, it's the ability to automate and to really make that uh, something that can drive your workflows and make you more efficient so that people aren't working on bad data working on out-of-date data, or they aren't manually trying to have to keep things up to date. And so this simple view is how that really works in terms of what we do, which is we help you find, you know, maybe it's not a needle in a haystack, but it's, you know, when you're working with either hundreds or thousands, or it could be millions of, of contacts, known and unknown, you know, how do you know where you want to spend money and who you want to interact with? And so this simple graph is the way that we talk about it, which is you've got company, you know, interaction and content, and you've got person-driven interaction and content. And so it's really, you know, what companies are in my uh, target zone and how are they interacting with me? What companies are in areas that I want to expand to? And that's, that's our sales white space. So, um, you know, this is a way for, that we work with people to kind of put people in these quadrants and help them, again, either be doing it when they're trying to work and identify sales territories and plans, 
or same data can drive automation. So in summary, um, things we know about you and working with your data, uh, we, we know your ideal buyer, we can know your best customers and prospects, we can identify your total addressable market, your white space, help you prioritize sales territories, your demand funnel, and also prioritize your, your content and campaigns by driving that off of all that data. And if you don't know those things, we can help you with that. And so that's really what we do at LeadSpace. And um, I'm going to attempt to change some slides here really quickly to show a short demo. We'll see if this, this works. It's always fun trying to do a demo. Okay, hey, here we go. We'll see if this actually works. Um, Uh, it looks like it's working. Okay, so what I wanted to show is how this actually surfaces in a um, in a uh, in a Salesforce report where we're feeding all the data. So this is an example of where what we've done is take all that fit scoring and intent scoring. So remember, we were just talking about that. So fit scoring. We put companies in the A, B, C, D type of uh, position. And then this is their intent. And so these are all scores that are maintained and updated based on how your data changes. And so if I were, in this case, this is a view that I would see either a salesperson using or someone that's in marketing using to quickly understand who are people that I want to um, go after in uh, a sales campaign or a marketing campaign. So. For example, this uh, group of people, A, high, uh, we can see there's 449 records. And we can see the people that are in this group. And uh, I'm not going to show all, well, actually, what we've got here is, I can see like I've got 79 people in Adobe, uh, in our case. I can see titles. I can see then what the percent they're in when we're talking about that. Uh, we also use our Pardot scores, our marketing automation here. And this is where we roll up to show engagement at the account level. I'm not gonna go farther right because that's where we've got real contact info that I don't wanna show. But what I want you to take away from this is what you're able to do with this is decide very quickly that, okay, well, maybe what I'm gonna do is my BDRs are only gonna work on say the high A's uh, in this case. And that's what I'm gonna run my, my BDR, my people campaign at and, and spend money. What I'm gonna do is put everybody else into some type of either email or nurture campaign for this activity. And that's that's a way to kind of think about how we start to use scoring in different ways. Um, and then I could use this in a, in a lot of different activities, but today, oh, I wanna set up a campaign. I've got a field marketing uh, event and I'm just gonna go after these people. So that's a simple way to just uh, explain how scoring comes together. And so we take it from, we cleaned your data we're keeping it up to date. And then we are able to um, give you abilities with it uh, that can make your sales and marketing groups more efficient. Okay, so with that, I've got a couple of minutes to do a couple of questions. Let me go to where those are at. And okay, so the first one is, um, for, uh, okay, so the, the way I'll put this is, so the first one is for how, uh, for doing lead account matching or real-time identification, uh, how does a CP or how does lead space, you know, support that? Okay, so that's a good one. And so this is a place where it really does matter the type of CDP that you have and how you're integrating that into your system. So I think traditionally, a lot of CBPs were, were not doing real-time activation um, unless they were more of a consumer type solution. In B2B, that's definitely a big place where people are looking for real-time activation and then uh, next, next best activity. So the way that we solve that and what you should look for in a CDP is how does a CDP identify people, whether they're known or unknown? And this is where our persona capability comes in because what we're able to do is you can map uh, people into personas. And then what you're gonna do is the persona and segmentation allows you to um, drive either email 
or sorry, campaigns, whether that's email ads based on those personas. And if you're on a website, the way this works is it's really by taking advantage of using your persona groups so that when uh, someone comes in and they do an activity, let's say they, they, they click on a piece of content uh, as a simple one and you want to show them an ad, well, what you're really doing is based on the content they're looking at and the activity. Um, if you know them, uh, you might put them into one content offer because you're identifying them uh, because of uh, they're either logged in or they have past activity. Uh, but where it gets interesting and like the world we're going to without cookies is that if you don't know them, we can still put them in a persona based on their activity, what they're looking at, what they're doing. And you can give them, you know, a nest, a net, an offer uh, and give them dynamic content based on that. So that's where CDPs come in is that, that real time slicing, dicing to drive, you know, lead to account matching. Say if we're going into something where we tell a BDR to call somebody or it goes into things like the demand generation and next best activity where we need to identify who the person is, uh, put them in a persona. And then, uh, and then drive that activity that's automated. Okay, that's all I'm gonna have time for today, but I, I hope people found this uh, really interesting. And of course, if you have questions, you can come to leadspace.com uh, and we have additional information for you there, or you can also request a uh, demo or salesperson contact you using one of our forms or using our trusty uh, bot on the website. Thank you very much.